In this video, I'm going to tell you about free body diagrams, and then the next video we'll actually draw some free body diagrams, so you'll get some examples or practice with that. So, um, when you have a free body diagram, you have your system or whatever your thing is, and you just draw it as like a dot. Okay, you can see in this one, we've got this ball and it's just hanging here. So we have this tension force and we have the gravity force and they're supposed to be equal to each other but a lot of times like I'm not going to make you draw your free body diagram arrows with um, a ruler or anything so um, what I usually do is I'll draw my free body diagram and try and make them look as close as possible together but then I'll go ahead and I'll say that my gravity force is equal to my tension force and that lets whoever's reading my diagram know that I meant these two to be the same size even if they don't actually end up the same size. Okay, so I don't know why I drew it over here, but this is for that one. Um, in this one, okay, we have our ball and we have the normal force of, the ta of that person's hand pushing up on the ball. And then we have our force of gravity and because this ball is not moving, our normal force is equal to our gravitational force. And so again, try and draw the arrows as close as possible to each other. But then also um, do this, and this lets anybody who's reading your diagram, including me, know that you meant those two to be the same, even if they're not exactly the same size. So um, again, you represent um, whatever you're talking about with a dot, okay? Um, sometimes you can draw a big dot. Um, I've seen where people will draw squares or whatever. That's that's fine. It's, but the basic thing is, is is you don't actually have to draw whatever you're talking about. You can you don't have to draw a human or a dog or whatever. You can just draw a circle or a square, and you can have that be whatever your thing is. And so um, you don't have to be a super great artist in order to draw a free body diagram. Now here's some more um, instructions. You want to represent each force with an arrow and you want it to be pointing in the direction of that force. Now um, you try to make the arrows length proportional to the force's size. So if you have like a teeny force, okay, you would kind of draw them like that if you have a teeny one and a long one. And you always want to draw your arrows pointing away from the object, even if the force is a push. So if we're moving in this direction, okay, and a force is a push, then you're going to put it on this side, okay, and then maybe you could have friction going this way. And so um, you could call this F push. A lot of times we just call it F applied, and that is whatever thing that's going on, that moving force. But what you do not want to do is you do not want to draw your push like this and then your friction like this. That is not okay. You will lose points. I will not give you credit for anything like this. Your arrows have to be going away from your um, away from whatever your object is. And then you want to label each force. You want to have a big F and then you want to have um, a little description of it. And you don't have to write Earth's mass on the ball. You can actually um, you can just write FG, and we all know that that's the force due to gravity, um, which is caused by that ball's mass. You don't have to write that long description. The next thing you want to do in a free body diagram is you want to choose a direction to be um, ne to be positive, and you usually um, use that in the direction of the greatest force. So if we have something accelerating, okay, we could call this F applied. And then we would say our velocity or our movement is this way and our acceleration is this way. And then you could draw like a little one and that would be your gravity. Okay, so um, you want to make sure that you want to represent your item as a dot, whatever it is. You want to draw arrows moving away from that object. You want to label them with a little subscript so we know what those are. If you just write this, okay, I have no idea what those are. They're both F, but there's no description. That is not helpful whatsoever, okay? 
And so now in this next section, we're going to actually draw some free body diagrams so you can get some practice.